Namaste. So, if you want peace, then you have to be peaceful. If you want health, then you have to give health to others. Just like if you want wealth, the best way to get wealth is to be productive and make things that people need and want. This is why we have made a course site and a community chat site connected to it. Those who are enrolled in the courses get to participate in the community. And these are the things that are missing. These are the things that are problems for the people who are interested, sincerely interested in spiritual life and making advancement in enlightenment. That is, spiritual knowledge which is non-sectarian, inclusive, and based on firm ontological analysis of the entire spectrum of spiritual practices and teachings. So we have that on our course site which is a compendium and a structured access to all of the videos on this channel. All 700 and I don't know what. But then we also have the association of like-minded people. And this is extremely important for keeping up your practice and staying motivated and not getting deviated by the multitude of distractions out there. The first thing about being healthy and advancing in spiritual life is to stop causing suffering for others. If in the beginning you don't have enough knowledge or experience to actively help others advance in spiritual consciousness, the least you can do is stop causing suffering and violence to others. And that includes not only human beings, but animals too. So the first step or the first rule or the first thing you must do in spiritual life is stop eating meat. I mean, this is so obvious, at least to me, that I stopped eating meat when I was 16 years old. Actually, I, meat always disgusted me. The whole idea of cutting up an animal and taking the insides out and ugh, so gross, you know? And then once I grew up a little bit, when I got to be 14, 15 years old, I realized that animals suffer. They're just like us. They don't like to hurt. They don't want to be killed. So this business of raising animals for slaughter and killing them is extremely violent and cruel. It's actually inhuman. It's demoniac. Huh? It's devilish in nature. So we should not participate in any part of this animal eating process. You know, some people say, well, I don't actually kill the animals. I just go to the store and pay for it. So <laughs> you're paying money, which is karma, that you earn by karma yoga, service to others. You pay that money to pay someone to do the dirty work for you. Uh, it's just like if somebody takes out a contract, you know, takes out a hit on, on another person. They are just as guilty as the one who pulls the trigger and they get the same punishment. And the same is true under God's law. If you hire somebody to do violence and cruelty to a poor, defenseless, innocent animal. I mean, this is like, like slaughtering babies, you know? 
They don't have the intelligence to resist. They don't have the ability to avoid their fate. So we are the ones who are responsible by financially supporting the whole machinery. And let's not even start to get into the economic and uh, the uh, environmental costs. For every pound of flesh on your table, it costs between something between 2,000 and 5,000 gallons of water. Precious water, which is becoming so scarce now that people are starting to fight over it. And this will only increase more and more. Not only that, the stuff that the animals are fed nowadays is horrible. It's the, 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 the garbage from the slaughterhouses, the, the garbage from the huge industrial fisheries that can't be sold to humans is ground up and fed to the cows. Even their other cows ground up and fed to the cows. And this is all garbage. It's terrible quality. And since you are what you eat, these cows become diseased. Often they're so diseased they can't even walk. And yet they're still dragged into the slaughterhouse and tortured and killed. And then they wind up in McDonald's burgers and all this other crap that nobody should be eating. I mean, just look at the people who eat that stuff. <laughs> Do you want to be like them? I sure don't. So that's the negative side of vegetarianism. The positive side is you can have a much greater variety of foods, much more tasty and delicious, and better nutrition by following a vegetarian diet. You have grains, beans, all kinds of legumes, which, by the way, should be combined together to get a complete protein. And then you have vegetables, so many different kinds of vegetables, fruit, milk products. Huh? I mean, just people don't know anything about milk in the West. There are so many things you can do with milk. And there are so many stages through which milk can be cycled. And the best thing to do with milk, of course, is make ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. If you take butter from the store and put it in a pan, heat it up, soon the solids will begin to rise to the top and fall to the bottom, leaving in the middle a clear golden liquid called ghee. Now, what is ghee exactly? It is the <laughs> essence of milk, the milk fat, which is normally in, in uh, regular milk, is suspended in a colloidal suspension of little droplets within the milk itself. But when you take out all the solids and the water, all that's left is the pure milk fat. And this is the best oil, the best, most nutritious form of oil there is. And yeah, it's a saturated fat, but it doesn't form, it doesn't clog your arteries. Huh? It doesn't form plaque, was what the word I was looking for. It simply gets digested and turns into pure energy. And another thing that ghee does is it grows neurons in your brain. Huh? Normally scientists say that once you reach a certain age, you start or you stop creating new neurons in your brain. Well, that's because they were testing meat eaters. If you're not a meat eater and you take plenty of ghee, then you're constantly developing new neurons and neuronal pathways in the brain. This means that learning can continue until the end of life. Never have to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to learn something. I learn something new every day. This is just part of the way I live. And so by taking ghee, you will increase your ability to learn things. 
increase your intelligence, your ability to understand and do spiritual practices, and so on. So ghee is highly recommended. <laughs> My neighbor has a big tree and this peacock loves to hang out there. I feed him every day. Dal, huh? Chana dal. He loves it. <laughs> He comes every sunset to my door. Anyway, then there's spices. Spices are hugely important, especially in vegetarian diet. Did you know that if a person is having a heart attack, you can give them a couple of grams of cayenne pepper in capsules, and it will stop the heart attack. And it will also stop the damage to the heart muscle that occurs afterward. This is astounding stuff. I'll, and it happened to me. I was having some heart troubles because I got mixed up with some really negative people. And negative emotions will definitely affect the heart. So if you are involved or contacted or connected with negative people like you got to break that right away. Get away from those people. They're going to hurt you. So anyway, at that time, I wasn't so that aware of this. So I got some heart troubles. And the doctor was saying, well, we have to put a stent in your artery, your coronal artery or something. So I didn't like that idea, especially after I looked up on the Internet, the mortality statistics for people with stents like 80 something percent of people who get stents have to have bypass surgery within five years. And I was like, no, 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 we're not going there. So I went down to the health food store and says, hey, what do you got for heart trouble? <laughs> Congestive heart trouble. He says, oh, cayenne, very, very potent, hot cayenne from Thailand. It comes in little capsules. It's too hot to eat. So you take the capsules along with your meal uh, and it really helps digestion and it also opens up all the circulatory system and your sinuses and everything. It's wonderful stuff. Capaskin is the active ingredient and you can get that also as an extract. So the point is I started taking this stuff and exercising, walking every day a little bit more. And after six weeks, I went back to the doctor. He did a treadmill stress test, and he says, there's no problems. This is impossible, he says. <laughs> it's impossible. You can't be cured. Huh? Something wrong. So he sent me to the hospital. <laughs> and they did more tests. They did an ultrasound and so many other things. No problems. Gone. Finished. Cured. Doctor says, that's impossible. He never did like me after that. <laughs> and he didn't give me very good service or treatments after that. So this is the problem with doctors. They don't really understand the human being as a whole. They don't understand that karma is involved. And they certainly don't understand the role of consciousness in health. So first of all, by stopping eating meat and other nasty things, I mean, we haven't even got started with drinking, drugs, and so many other nonsense that people do. But simply by stopping meat, you clear your conscience. And this has a very profound effect on consciousness. Consciousness, which is not bound to the body by conscience, becomes free from karma. Karma is the immediate cause of suffering. We suffer different kind of problems and troubles and pains and this and that because of karma. When our karma, due to our past actions, comes ripe, uh, that's when we have troubles. That's when we have disease. That's when we have different kinds of financial problems and so on. So if we lighten our burden of karma, then we are free from these things. We're free from suffering. And 
take it from me. This meat eating is heavy, heavy karma. In fact, one has to be born as an animal and be slaughtered to fully expiate the karma of meat eating. It's very nasty stuff. So we're going to be going in the next few videos, we're going to be going through several processes that you can use to lighten up your karma, to purify yourself. One of them is this, this basma, this holy ash, uh, vibhuti. And another one is mantras. And there's so many others, and we'll gradually cover everything, or at least the basic. And this will allow you, by performing these processes, to lighten up your karma, lighten up your suffering, and transform yourself into the kind of person who has a blissful, happy life, a light consciousness, a bright mind, huh? sharp intelligence, and good spiritual prospects for the future. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.